Alright, hey guys, um, so this is the other new animal that I got earlier today. Um, he's called a Western Toad. I believe the scientific name is Bufo um, Boreas or Berenas, something along those lines. Um, they're called Western Toads because they're found um, only west of the Rocky Mountains, so nowhere here on the East Coast. Um, he's only a toadlet right now. Um, they grow to about in a year, they'll grow to maybe 5 inches max for the males, and the females a little bigger, around 7 inches. Right now, he's maybe a little over an inch. He's not even um, bigger than my thumb. So right now, he'll be eating about, I don't know, small mealworms, uh, crickets, um, small nymph dubia roaches. And actually, so since my tiger salmoner died, I, I don't know why I never took any videos or pictures of him barely took any pictures but oh well yeah so I figured I'd get a new amphibian and that's why I went into the store today to get a white tree frog but then when I saw him I figured hmm western toad I haven't really heard of these guys and I figured it's the first time I've seen one so I might as well get him compared to the white tree frog which a lot of people keep these guys are more uncommon I'd suppose even though they're actually a native of the US so I don't know I think he's pretty cool and actually, I like toads a little more better than frogs because toads are more active. This guy's been jumping around a lot. For his frogs, like Pac-Man frogs, they just stay there in one place, maybe until like they get hungry or something. And I was actually thinking of maybe the next toad I'll get is a climbing toad, which is basically like a tree frog except it's a toad. But yeah, and so these guys will eat um, invertebrates, um, any insects, uh, grasshoppers, roaches, crickets, worms. That kind of thing, pretty much the same as the green snake. And then they'll eat anything that they can fit into their mouths, which on this guy, even though he's tiny, he could probably eat like an adult cricket easily. And I'll try to feed him earlier, but I don't know, maybe he's he's probably stressed out from being uh, transferred from this order to my home. I don't know. It took maybe like one, two hours to get from Baltimore to here in D.C., uh, the shop was in Baltimore. It's pretty much the only reptile shop I know of here in Maryland. So yeah, right now I just have him in a quarantine tub. I'll probably move him into a, um, see there, I'll probably move him into a 10 gallon. Maybe next week after he, he starts eating and shows that he's healthy. I have just, you know, I have sphagnum moss as a substrate. I s sprayed it a lot, got it wet. And I have the, um, water bowl right there with water and the hide and um, from what I've um, read and seen these guys will just do well at room temperature they're actually they do well in, in actually like colder temperatures than you'd expect for an amphibian um, they're found maybe like up to I don't know 10,000 feet up in like the mountains the hills the Colorado Rockies and so yeah they can take the cold temperatures pretty well so that's good I don't have any heat set up for them just have them at room temperature Around maybe, I don't know, the low 70s, high 60s in my place. But yeah. So that's pretty much it. Oh, and another thing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but if you check out right behind his eye and like above his arm on his head there, the little um, bumps that you can see. I don't know if, oh. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's pretty clear right there. Those little bumps are called, I believe, um, it's pronounced parotid glands, and that's actually what holds the um, toxins. If they're threatened, like they'll secrete a milky white substance that comes out of there. And from my experience, it's really sticky and like it's really irritating. And if you eat them, you'll probably die. Like if my king snake can get a hold of this guy, uh, he's gonna be a goner. But yeah, even for like a tiny toadlet, those parotid glands are pretty big. So yeah, oh, all right. this guy's probably being stressed out enough. I'll go put him in, back in his hut. I mean, cover up his container, put him back. And, I don't know, maybe in like a day or two, I'll show a feeding video of him and the rough green snake once they're all well and accustomed to their new enclosures. So yeah, again, Merry Christmas, you guys. Peace.